Ian here, founder of In 30 Minutes Guides. I have a very neat trick to show you today with Google Sheets, how to create a purchase order using templates. If this video helps, please take a moment to like it and follow me. Let's get started. This is the standard Google Sheets that anybody can get on any sort of browser in any operating system, whether it's a Mac, Windows, or Chromebook. At the top, when you open up Google Sheets, you should see a template gallery, and you may actually see the purchase order template there. If not, click on template gallery, if you see no templates available, make sure that you're clicking on general and general is kind of like Google's uh, holding pen for all the templates that they have and purchase order should be somewhere near the top and here it is. Now this is a purchase order that you might use if let's say you're getting started with a business or maybe you're not even running a business, you just need to order something and whoever is handling the order, whoever with the supplier you're ordering from, they say we need to have a formal purchase order. So this is this is a really good solution. So your company, you could also just call it your name, but let's say this just say I'm gonna call it, you know, Jim McGovern. Um Jim McGovern Supplies. Okay. That's the name of my company. Here I put my street number, contact information, etc. Um it may be also be possible to insert an image, like if you have a logo or something. So I just selected a cell, insert. Let's see if image is a possibility. Yeah, you can. So you can you can insert an image into the cell or insert image over the cells if you have a logo that you can use. I'm not gonna do that today. Uh, purchase order. So date here, you would change that. So today is the 11th of 2023. Now here it says invoice. I would I would get rid of that. And actually, before we go any further, I think it's a good idea to make a copy of this. So maybe I'm going to call this PO0001, okay? Make a copy. So that way the template will remain pristine because I'm going to do some edits to this. So here it is again, Jim McGovern Supplies. I'm ordering some stuff from, uh, from some other vendor. So here it says invoice and PO number. You don't need to have both of these here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of invoice because it's not an invoice. PO number, this should be a number that you come up with. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just call this like 0001 if you want. Or sometimes what I do is I'll create an invoice number and then I'll just add some approximation of the date. So 051123, okay? So when I, whenever I look at this purchase order number, I can see this is the first, this is purchase order number one and this is when I place the purchase order. Ship date, um, you know that's to that's to that's to be determined or you can say you know before june 15th 2023 ship via you know ups only and shipping and payment terms um you can say net 30 upon delivery so there's different systems for asking for payment or saying you know when you'll pay uh, this is a pretty standard one net 30 that means uh, upon, after after the items are delivered um, you know, issue the invoice and we'll pay it within 30 days. So the vendor, this is the company that would go here. So let's say that I'm order, ordering from Acme Wholesale. All right, uh, street address. Put in that. Put that. Put in that information. You know, 123 Maple Street or whatever it is. Fill in all that information. You may also want to put in an extra row here. Like, so I'm going to insert one row below because I'm going to say attention. You know, Sheila. Sheila Green, okay? And then ship two, your name. So here it would be Jim McGovern. Actually, I just see I made, I made a mistake there. I don't even need to do that because I can put Sheila's name up here, Sheila Green. All right, and go through, put in all these details. What did I call the name of my company? Jim McGovern Supplies. So I'm just gonna copy that, save some time. So if it, the formatting's all wrong, here's what you do. Um, select this cell, select the copy paint format, and then I'm just gonna click the other cell. And there we go, all right. And then here's the items that you would order. So these these would be items that you see in the catalog. Uh, maybe you can give it a more of a description, like you could call it like, you know, uh, green widget, okay? And then this one would be blue widget. You can see that the unit price, so this would be whatever the catalog says. So let's say green widgets are 200, blue widgets are $100. You can change that. Notice how this automatically updates, which is really great. Now, the other thing you may wanna do is, let's say that you're ordering more than two items. That's no problem. What you can do here is you can add another row above and then just copy this row. So I'm gonna copy that. So I've selected the row, go to edit, copy, 
And then down here, right below it, I'm just going to do edit, paste. All right, so it's forcing me to use keyboard shortcuts. So what you can do is if you're using a Mac, uh, Mac use, you use Control V. If you're using Windows or Chromebook, you use Command V. So I'm just going to paste that in, and this, let's call this red widget. And then maybe what I can do is change the number here. Make sure, make sure all the numbers are correct. Ordering three, okay. And then you can see it's automatically tabulating, which is great. So uh, tax rate, that depends on your local situation. So you'll need to check with whatever the state regulations are, or maybe talk with your accountant. But this is the per this is the purchase order, the items. At this point, what you can do is I recommend printing it out. You can also email it straight to somebody. But I think printing it out is better, turning it into a PDF, and you can either attach it as a PDF, and this would be like this, download as a PDF. Here's, here's what it looks like. Maybe you can change the formatting so it's this is portrait style. If the sizes don't work or you want to mess around with like making sure everything fits on one page, go back and then change the change the font size and whatnot. But then you can basically uh, export it as a PDF, print it out, attach it to an email or what have you. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please take a moment to like this video and follow me. And also if you go to in30minutes.com, that's the official website for In 30 Minutes Guides, you'll see all the guides we have, including Google Drive and Google Docs in 30 minutes. It's now in its second or third edition, and I am the author. Thank you so much for watching.